Hi, Steven Shen here, Team Potsky and STS Guide Service. Today I'm gonna to walk you through a beginner's guide to setting up a float fishing setup to fish in the Great Lakes for salmon or steelhead. Today we're gonna to set up a spinning rod, but this could be used for a center pin, a bait caster, or a spinning rod. Whatever rod technique you wanna use. So we're gonna go over the rod and reel setup that I'm gonna set up today. As I said earlier, this could be a spinning rod, a bait caster rod, or a spinning rod like we're gonna set up today. So here's the rod that I use every day with my customers. This is a Lama Glass, the closer. This is the 12 foot model. It also comes in a 13 foot model. Now, in terms of rod length, you could use a nine foot, 10 foot, 11 foot, 12 foot, 13 foot. Pretty much anything that's a steelhead rod that you have and it fits the stream size that you're gonna fish. I fish medium to large water, so I need longer rods to get the lineup off the water to get us a little bit smoother drift. But if you fish smaller streams, a nine or 10 foot rod might be perfect for where you're fishing. Now, for the reels I use, I'm gonna use a, Shim I'm using Shimano Van Fords. This is the 4,000 size reel. Now, the reason I use this reel is it's a little bit larger reel to pair with my long rod, and it allows me to have a smoother drift as the line comes off the reel. This rod and reel setup is what I choose to use every day fishing uh, with my customers, and I think that this could be something that could be used by anyone in the Great Lakes. So the line that I prefer to use for this float fishing technique is P-Line TCB8 braid connected to P-Line CXX in moss green. Now, the reason I use a high-vis line is so that we are able to track our drift through the current. Being able to see your drift and where your line is allows you to get a little bit smoother drift through the holes, runs, or tailouts that you may be fishing. So I'm utilizing about six foot of P-Line CXX in eight pound test, moss green. And at the end of that, I'm gonna utilize a Spro Swivel, size 10 power swivel. This swivel is rated for 35 pound test, so it exceeds the breaking strength of everything else in my setup, so I don't have a terminal tackle failure. So now that we have a monofilament line tied onto our high vis line, we can connect our float to the monofilament. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna use two pieces. You could also use a third piece of surgical tubing that's sold with any of the floats. The way we're gonna attach the float is just simply to slide these two pieces of tubing onto our eight pound test And then once they're on, what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect the float by pushing it through the tubing on one piece on the bottom stem and one piece on the top stem. So now, as you can see, the line runs along the outside of the float so that now we can adjust the length of our setup by sliding the float up or down the line to adjust to the depth of the water that we plan to fish. By setting it up like this, it allows you to change the depth from the top of the run to the bottom of the run or from one hole to the next. A fixed float that is adjustable is the easiest way to be able to adapt to changing conditions in the Great Lakes. So now we're gonna tie the Spro swivel onto the line. Today I'm gonna to use a Palomar knot. I'm gonna show you how to tie the knot, and if I go too fast, I'm sorry, and there's many places online that you could look up to find how to tie this knot at a much slower speed. So I'm gonna take the fishing line, feed it through the eye of the hook. Now I actually am gonna double this back through and run it back through the opposite way that I had it originally. So now I have two pieces of line through one end of the swivel. As you can see here, it's doubled through. My next step is to make a loop of line and I will reach through the center loop to grab the, the tag end loop. Now the third and final step 
is to reach through the tag end loop and grab the swivel. Now, when I tighten all this down, I'm gonna moisten the knot to increase the maximum strength of the knot that I can get. As I said, we're gonna reach through, get the swivel, bring it just barely tight, moisten the knot, and pull it tight. Now, my knot is complete. I'm gonna trim my tag end with a pair of scissors. Now, you don't need to trim it really ex super tight, but you do wanna keep your knots nice and slim with small tag ends to increase the stealth of the rig. So there's a completed Palomar knot on my Spro Power Swivel and we're ready to attach our fluorocarbon. Now, when we're fishing in the Great Lakes, we utilize fluorocarbon from the swivel to the hook. The reason that we use fluorocarbon leader is that the Great Lakes can run quite clear, especially in the wintertime months, and the invisibility of the fluorocarbon under the water greatly increases our chances to get a steelhead or a salmon to bite for us when utilizing this rig. So when we connect our fluorocarbon leader, this is Sunline FC Sniper in six pound test. You could utilize anything from four all the way up to 10 or 12 pound test, depending on what you're fishing for and what you're using for a bait. I find that six through eight pound test are the most versatile pound tests to use in this style of fishing. So when we tie this on to the other end of our swivel, we have to use a different knot other than the Palomar knot. And the reason being is we don't have the ability to pull the swivel through that loop end of the knot. So here I'm gonna use what we, I call the 100% knot. This was, it's made, it was invented by the Orvis Fly Fishing Company and the knot is tied like this. We feed it through the eye of the swivel one time. We wrap the tag end around the main line one time. We feed it through the hole and then we take our tag end and run it through this hole that we've created two times. Now again, we're gonna moisten the knot, pull the tag, and then tighten the knot down. Another very small knot that once we trim the tag end is very in line and very small, which adds to the stealthiness of our rig. So now we're gonna attach our hook to our fluorocarbon leader. I typically use about two foot leader. Now there are times that we use a little bit more or a little bit less depending on water conditions, clarity, and water levels. The lower and clearer the water, typically you wanna use a longer leader so that the fish don't see your weights, your swivel, and all the other terminal tackle coming through the water. But as a general rule of thumb, two foot long is a great starting point for this rig. So we're just gonna attach our hook. Now, for hooks, I use both Daiichi and fire hooks. I, I use both in a size 10 or a size eight. Either one of those is a proper size hook to use when using spawn sacks, beads, fireworms, or anything else that you wanna try and trick a steelhead with. So again, we're gonna be able to use a Palomar knot here. So we feed it through the eye of the hook once. We come back the opposite direction. So again, just as a reminder, we have the eye of the hook with two pieces of line through it. We're gonna double it over and make a loop. Through the middle, we're gonna grab the tag end loop, and then we're gonna come through this same loop and grab the hook and pull it through and tighten it up. Now, we're gonna pull both the tag end and the main line to bring it taut, and that is an incredibly strong knot that won't fail when you're trying to pull on a big salmon or steelhead in the Great Lakes. So, the most common question I'm asked day in and day out about steelhead fishing in the Great Lakes is how do I figure out the shot that I need to put on the line or shot pattern? Let me tell you one thing. People think way too much about it. it is not as complicated as everyone wants to make it out to be. So I utilize SureShot, it's the name brand, 
And as you can see here, this is the size of the shot. I do use many different sizes of shot based on what the water conditions are. But I'm going to show you how to attach them. And then we're going to take a quick break and I'll show you the completed shot pattern. So the way we're going to attach the shot as a general rule of thumb is on the swivel end of our rig, the split shot will be smaller than the split shot that I attach to the line directly below the float. The reason for this size difference is that the bottom speed of the river is slower than the surface speed. So our bait needs to be slowed down slightly less than our float needs to be slowed down as it's drifting through the current. I'll go into that once I have the completed pattern and show you the difference. But to show you how to connect the shot to the line is really simple. So we're gonna take one small split shot here. We're gonna put it on the side of the swivel that the float is on, not the side of the swivel that is the fluorocarbon leader that goes to the hook. So we're simply going to lay the monofilament into the, the opening in the split shot and you will crimp the split shot closed with a small pair of pliers or, but don't tell my dentist this, I do put them on with my teeth. So to, I just lightly crimp the shot so that now it's firmly in place on the monofilament line, not the fluorocarbon leader. Now that the shot's connected to the line, we're gonna show you what it looks like in the taper of the pattern down to the swivel. As you can see up by the float, we're starting with a bigger shot and we're gonna taper down through smaller as we go. Overall on our, on our monofilament, we have about 10 to 12 split shots three to four of each size, varying from buck size under the float down to size one or size four just above the swivel. Now, it is important to keep in mind that if you cast out with this amount of weight and your float sinks on its own, you would need to do one of two things. You either need to go to a larger float or you do need to take some of your shot off your line. Now. When you're watching your float drift down the current, it is important that the transition between the high vis top and the natural wood color, whether it's black, wood, clear, the transition between the high vis and the non high vis is sitting at or near the water line. You don't want to see the high vis underneath the water, and you also don't want to see a vast majority of the float that's not high vis standing up out of the water. The reason it is important to have that high vis transition somewhere near the water line is it increases the sensitivity of the float so that when you do get a strike, the bobber sinks more easily, letting you know that you have a fish. So when we choose a bait to run for a salmon or a steelhead in the Great Lakes, the most common one that I utilize would be a spawn sack. So these right here are what we would call spawn sacks. So these are using Atlas Mike's three by three spawn netting squares with Atlas Mike's miracle thread in clear or any other color that you prefer. Then we utilize Potsky's premium trout eggs. Now, throughout the Great Lakes, you, many anglers also choose to utilize other types of eggs. Right here, I do have some steelhead eggs that are cured in Potsky's Boraxo Fire Natural. As you can see, it turns out an absolutely beautiful product that steelhead, brown trout, and salmon all really do gobble right up. So I'm actually gonna show you how to tie a spawn sack that we can then use to fish with. So here's a one square of Atlas Mike's three by three netting. In this one, I'm actually gonna use the premium trout eggs. So premium trout eggs are great for anglers who really don't wanna harvest a fish, whether it's due to catch and release reasons or, or fishing regulations, or even the inability to get eggs prior to their trip to tie so that they have bait for their trip. 
So I'm gonna tie a nice medium sized spawn sack that's versatile in many conditions. So here we have maybe 20 to 30 trout eggs that we're gonna lay out on our square of mesh. We're gonna fold the spawn sack in half. Now I bring up all four corners so that it's touching. Now we're gonna slightly twist the top of the material to help make the spawn sack nice and round and tight so that you have a nice presentation drifting through the water. We're gonna utilize Atlas Mike's Miracle Thread here. And the beauty of this material is that all you need to do is wrap it around the connection between the extra spawn netting and the eggs themselves. I made six to eight turns one way pulled hard to break the thread, and I'm gonna do six to eight turns the opposite direction and also pull till the thread breaks. Now, we have this extra material at the top here. We don't fish it quite like this. The last step we do is we're gonna come in here with a pair of scissors and trim this extra material off right at the top of the elastic miracle thread. Now, our spawn, net, our spawn sack's ready to be fished. So now that we just tied our spawn sack, I'm gonna show you how to hook it on. So we have our spawn sack and we have our hook. Now, I choose to hook the spawn sack through the bottom of the mesh and run it through maybe five to eight squares of the netting so that now when we're done fishing the spawn sack, it's easy to remove. If you hook the hook under the knot, which some people choose to do, when you wanna change your spawn sack, it's very difficult to pull the hook through that elastic miracle thread. So by hooking it through the bottom of the spawn sack, you increase the ability to change baits quickly to spend more time in the water and less time fiddling with your tackle. One of the most popular baits for steelhead anywhere in the country, and especially in the Great Lakes, would be rubber worm. Believe it or not, this bubblegum fire worm, or any other worm that you choose to use, whether it's a different color or a different brand, is a, an effective bait for catching steelhead in the Great Lakes. I'm gonna show you how, to, how we hook these. Now obviously, you can attach these many different ways, but the way I prefer to hook them is on the same setup with our hook that we saw that we used with the egg sack. We're simply gonna run the hook down through about a third of the way down the worm. We're gonna run it about the length of the hook shank. We're gonna pull our hook through so that our worm sits right on top of the hook shank like this. Now, when we drift this through the current, the worm's gonna have a lot of action in the water, which entices the steelhead to bite. Another option for rigging this worm would be on a small jig head, most likely a 164th ounce, or also true wacky style, like the bass fishermen do. We're just gonna stick the hook right through the side of the worm and pull it straight out. And there you have a, rack, wacky, wit, a, a wacky style worm Another bait that's increasing in popularity rapidly throughout the Great Lakes are steelhead beads. Now this bead that I'm gonna to use today is made by a dear friend of mine at Great Lakes Steelhead Company. They make hundreds of different size beads, shapes, sizes, colors, something that'll certainly match where you're fishing. Now that doesn't mean that this is the only bead to use. There's plenty of bead manufacturers that are popping up all throughout the Great Lakes and also throughout the entire country. I'm gonna show you quickly how you rig a bead to catch a steelhead. So the bead comes with a hole through the center of it. All we're gonna do is we're gonna slide it up our fluorocarbon leader. Now, as you can see, our swivel's here, and this bead is free floating through on the line. The next thing I do is I'm gonna tie my hook on. Again, I'm gonna use the Palomar knot that we've discussed earlier. So we're gonna just quickly tie this on. Again, if you need, in-depth discussion or instructions on how to tie a Palomar knot. There are many great videos to find that will show you exactly how to tie this knot. 
So now we have our hook tied on. We're going to slide our bead down and we're going to put a peg through the bead. Now these pegs are sold by the bead manufacturers. Great Lakes Steelhead Company sells pegs in clear, red, and orange. So we're going to pull this till it's tight. Now the, the peg will jam right in there and this side actually popped off just perfectly. Now this side I'm going to need to trim with a pair of scissors. Now you don't need to trim it exactly flush but you do want it pretty close there so that you don't have a big lump of silicone sticking out of the side. Now in terms of where we run the bead we run it approximately one to two inches away from the eye of the hook. Now the reason that's done is that if this bead were rigged directly on the eye of the hook the diameter of the bead would block the hook gap from hooking the steel head when it bites. By simply sliding the bead away from the eye of the hook approximately one to two inches this allows so that when the fish grabs the bead the hook when you you will see the bite and you when you set the hook the hook will come through and hook the fish. Now check your local regulations as to whether or not this is legal in your state. Where I fish this is a legal effective method but there are some states in the Great Lakes where this isn't an, is an allowable technique. So just make sure you check your regulations in the state you're fishing to make sure that this is something that you can use. Now when, in, when running beads, one thing that we found has been incredibly successful in the Great Lakes. Now mind you, when I first started steelhead fishing, scent wasn't something that I was told I had to run. It wasn't something that was really utilized in the Great Lakes. Now it may be by some people or in some areas, but this new Potsky Fire Gel, since it's come out, it's incredible the success that we've seen utilizing it on things that inherently have no scent. So what I'm talking about is fishing beads or jigs. Now, these two things typically were just always fished the way they are. Now, a spawn sack obviously has the scent of the natural eggs. Now, fire gel is caught on so much that there's even times that in Ohio or Pennsylvania or other Great Lakes states where they're putting fire gel right on their spawn sack. But every day, the way I utilize fire gel is simply by taking the bead, putting it in the gel, and I just roll it around. Now, if that's too much for you, you can wipe some of it off. Now, it does stay on there great. You can make many, many casts, and when you reel it in, you'll still be able to see the fire gel right on the bead. The number three, the top three scents that I've personally found for steelhead fishing in the Great Lakes are shrimp, anise, and steelhead. Those three scents have worked for me, whether I'm utilizing them on beads, plugs, or jigs in the Great Lakes. Hopefully, this video helps somebody figure out how to set up their rod and reel to float fish for steelhead or salmon in the Great Lakes. Now, this isn't the definitive guide. There's other ways to do it. This is just what I use day in and day out that provide a lot of success for both me and my clients, steelhead fishing in the Great Lakes. Potsky products are available at sporting goods stores near you. If you can't find the specific color, size that you want, make sure to go to Potsky.com. And as a thank you for watching Potsky Outdoors, we're going to show you a coupon code to be used for 10% off your next order.